some years ago and the picture he brought back to me was when my son was celebrating his one year birthday he was a year older this month 15th of january and i remember that birthday i was looking for a simple shirt to wear for that birthday but i couldn't i never had it and the person said this was where you were years ago and this was where you are now when i woke up physically i was in uk i had to burst into tears that morning i was just thanking god and appreciating god and that is why this morning i want you to look at where you've been the process that you've gone to where you are now and where god is taking you to and begin to exalt him if it had not been the lord you will not be here don't deceive yourself Something more than gold. I have something more than gold. That was the only thing that made a difference in my something life. Something more than gold. I have something more than gold. Thank you. 
the earth is his footstool. Scripture tells us that you are the only one that can use the heaven as a coverlet. Your eyes is like fire. When you speak, your voice is like the rushing of mighty waters. Sounds like thunder. The mountains saw you and they begin to skip like lamb. You are the king of all kings. You set one and you can dethrone one any day. But no man can dethrone you. You are the one that had carried our battle to the gates of our enemies and defeated them on our behalf. You are the only one who makes sure that we are not ashamed. You are the one that had clothed us with your glory and your honor. Beautify us and provided for us. And said, this is my servant in whom I am well pleased. Father, this morning we have come to say thank you. We appreciate you. We bless your name. We give you all the glory. Anything anybody sees in us today, we ascribe the greatness to you, our King and our God. Because without you, we are nothing. The Bible says, Why, what is man that you are mindful of him? That the son of man that you take note of him. I appreciate you. We worship you as a church because you chose us. Blessed be your name, we adore you, Lord. We appreciate you, our Lord. This morning we have come again so that you can bless us. We ask that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened. Amen. To minister to us precept upon precept. The grace to understand. Open our hearts to your word today. The grace to be doer of what will be here. Lord, this you ask of God. We ask that you go ahead of us, O God. Perform your signs and wonders. Take control of this meeting. Let your presence come down again. All the glory. We be careful to ascribe it to you, our God and our King. Thank you, Father. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can you have your seats this morning? Hallelujah. We are still on our team, Divine Multiplication. And I want us to quickly read the scriptures. Genesis chapter, chapter 13. Please, I want you to open your Bible also. Let's read together. From verse 14 says, And the Lord said unto Abraham, After that Lord was separated from him, Lift up now thy eyes, and look from the place where thou art northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Jeremiah chapter 30. Verse 19. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that maketh merry. And I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. Hallelujah. Um, last week, Pastor talked about the condition for fulfillment, fulfilling multiple um, divine multiplication. And these are some of the things he talked about. He talked about separating yourself from your lot. We can see that in Genesis 13, 14. He also spoke about walking in the covenant, understanding the vision God is giving to you. Also in Genesis 13, 14, he spoke extensively on faith after Lot left Abraham from that scripture we just read I realized something that Abraham did not leave God Abraham still stayed with God we go back to Genesis chapter 13 verse 14 the Bible says and the Lord said unto Abraham after that Lord was separated from him lift up now thy eyes praise the Lord so Abraham stayed and that was one of the conditions that helped him to assess divine multiplication, staying in the presence of God. So one of the conditions we want to talk about this morning 
is the presence of God. You really want to get this multiple divine multiplication that we are talking about? You need to stay with God. You need to assess the presence of God. I want us to understand some basic things. Divine multiplication that we are talking about is not just material things alone. It's not just money alone. We are also talking about the spiritual things that God will add to you also as you stay with him. In 1906, there was this revival called the Azusa Street Revival. There's a black man called William Seymour with some set of people. He was a son of a slave, but he took time to tarry in the presence of God. And as they took time to stay in the presence of God, the people in the streets, in their houses, were getting the impacts of God. So the multiplication was moving from one street to the other, from one house to the other, because some people decided to seek the face of God and to seek the presence of God. Men had carried the presence of God, and when they did, there was a stir in their generation. I'm sorry, a lot of us have heard of Smith Wigglesworth before. We are sitting down in this place today because of Emmy Simple Mafasi, who decided to carry the presence of God to our generation. Kechin Kuman did that also. John Knox carried the presence of God, and there was multiplication in Scotland. Men who had had encounter with God, one of them was Moses. I want us to read this scripture in Exodus chapter 34. Let's see how the presence of God brought multiplication to this man. Exodus chapter 34. Verse 28 says, And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And it came to pass, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimonies in Moses' hand, when he had come down from the mount, that Moses wished not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. So Moses spent time in the presence of the Lord. Thank God we are having our 40 days prayer and fasting. One of the things God wants to multiply in our life is his presence. He's been there with us. He's his glory. Radiating in our life from one level to the other. No wonder Moses could lead men who had nothing in the wilderness into becoming a nation. I love the story about Bensi Idaosa. He said, if I am the man of God, how did he get here? The presence of God. And he went around expanding the kingdoms of God, multiplying the kingdom people into the kingdom of God in different nations because he carried the presence of God. When men carry the presence of God, they don't need to pray so long for divine multiplication because that is part of God's blessing for them. So we need to understand these basic facts that God wants to do more than just the physical things we are seeing. He wants to multiply us beyond where we are now. Change our prayer life. Make sure that when we move around where we live in our compound, we don't run from anybody. There will be peace in our homes. Why? Because we are carrying the presence of God. And so let's look at what the Bible says in Acts chapter 5, verse 15. Acts chapter 5, verse 15. Scripture says, In so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and coaches that at least the shadow of Peter passing might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities around unto Jerusalem, bringing six folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirit, and they were healed, every one of them. Why? Because Peter carried the presence of God, sicknesses decreased, healing increased, peace came into those streets, so these are some of the basic things one I want you to understand today. God wants to multiply us in different dimensions, but first we need his presence. I love the story of J.K. Lakes. I have read the story of that man years ago. Years ago, the man was an evangelist. There was this 
and, and sickness, the outbreak of diseases during this time. And he told them that that particular bacteria that is causing that disease, that they should put it in his hand. They said, ah, people are dying and you are telling us to do this. He said, yes. And as you are putting it in my hand, you can come with your microscope and everything. As that thing touches my hand, it will die. And they did that. And what happened? They went into their hospital. Everywhere they had people who were sick, they brought them out to GK Lakes. And that was how sicknesses, diseases, and deaths decreases during that time. There was divine multiplication. God wants to pour himself into us for divine multiplication. You can't continue to be in that situation. Your thoughts, your own imagination should not stop at God helping you to build houses this year. God prospering you financially this year. God wants to move through you to get to your neighbor. God wants to increase the peace in the home of those your colleagues. Through you. That is why he wants you to carry his presence. Divine multiplication. I don't want you to forget that that's what we are still talking about. Assessing divine multiplication through the presence of God. Another story that I want us to look at this morning is in Genesis chapter 39. I want us to open our Bible to that scripture because there are some things I want us to look at in that particular scripture. Genesis chapter 39, verse 2. The Bible says, And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord has made that all that he did to prosper in his hands. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him. Now, what was the key to Joseph's prosperity? God was with him. He carried God's presence. That Potiphar could not remove his eyes. If you check the history of Joseph, being in Potiphar's house, he was not the only slave that was there, but he was distinct. He was different because he carried the presence of God. If you look at Genesis chapter 35, verse 9, something unique in that verse. And it came to pass from time to time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had. That the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in his field. Just because somebody decided to seek the face of God, carry the presence of God, stayed with God, God began to bless his master. God did not just bless him in the field. His business is changed. God also went as far as bringing a turnaround in the house of Potiphar. So seated right here this morning, I want you to understand something. That the move of God concerning divine multiplication is not just that you will have all that you are asking for. But he also wants to use you as an extension to reach out to your neighbor. As an extension to bring peace in your community as you carry his presence. So remember, there was multiplication because Joseph decided to stay with the Lord. Hallelujah. Second Kings chapter 4. Second Kings chapter 4, I want to read verse 42. And there came a man for Bathsheba and brought the man of God bread of the first fruit, twenty loaves of barley, and full of ears of corn in the hocks thereof. And he said, Give unto the people that they may eat. And his servant said, What shall I say this before an hundred men? He said again, Give people that they may eat, for thus says the Lord, they shall eat and shall have leftover. So he set it before them, and they did eat and left over according to the word of the Lord. Now I'm sure a lot of us have not seen the scripture. We only knew that Jesus prayed for um, two loaves and five fishes and things turned around. They had 12 baskets remaining. 
But when this servant came to Elisha, and Elisha said, begin to serve them. And he said, 100 men, how can I do that? There was divine multiplication. Why? Because Elisha carries the presence of God. He just spoke the word, and the food began to multiply. The food began to multiply. That the people who sat down there had enough. The Bible said that there was left over. That is what I am talking about. That as you leave this place today with the presence of God, and as you continue to abide in His presence and continue to seek His face and dwell there, the moment you begin to speak, things begin to turn around. As you speak, there will be financial breakthrough. There will be marital breakthrough for people. There will be peace. And also, your spiritual life will never remain the same. Because there will be a turning around for you also. You can assess God anytime. You can speak the word of God. Can you imagine what Elijah said? He said, there will be no way not due in this land. According to my word. He didn't say, thus says the Lord. He said, according to his word. Who does that? A man who carries the presence of God. Say to your neighbor, carry the presence of God. Say to your neighbor again, for divine multiplication, you need the presence of God. Hallelujah. So there was divine multiplication because he carried the presence of God. Also, Exodus chapter 24, verse 15 to 8. I want us to look at that scripture also. Exodus 24. From verse 15. First from verse 1. And he said unto Moses, Come up and unto the Lord. Da and Aaron, Nabda and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. Then from verse 15, the Bible says, And Moses went up into the mount. Now, before we get there, I want to read a particular scripture. Now, 70 elders, Moses, Aaron, and his sons, went unto the mountain the bible says and moses told the people all the words of the lord and all the judgment and all the people answered with one voice this was what happened verse 9 and moses went up and aaron Nabda, abihu and 70 of the elders and they saw the god of israel and there was under his feet as it were a paved walk of a seraphim stone and it were like the body of heaven in its clearness and upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also they saw God, and they did eat and drink. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up unto me, and be there, and I will give the tables of stone. The first time I read this scripture, I was wondering. Now, God asked them to come. They went with Moses. They got to a particular place. They saw like they saw God. They saw food. They sat down. They started eating. And God went forward and said, Moses, please come. Did you hear that these 70 elders did anything unique in the Bible? Did they do exploits like Moses? Did God give them the commandments? Did God give them um, the status? Did God speak to them face to face? Did God perform miracles through them? No. There's a lesson for us to learn here. That you've been in church since they started this church does not mean that you carry the presence of God. Let's not get to the point in our Christian work with God where we begin to feel that we've arrived. That we've had enough of God. Don't you know me? I have been healing the sick before you were born. What about today? Don't you know me? I, have become, I was in GSS before. And so they are doing Sunday school preview. You are not there anymore. I will never forget the story Mama told us those days in Akure. That whenever they come for choir practice, this sister will not come. On Sunday morning, they say, Sister, we didn't see you in church. You say, what? What did you sing? Is it not that song? Please, I know the song. The moment they come to sing, she will start singing. In fact, when she starts singing, everybody will bow because she has the voice. And that was the way she was treating choir practice with context and those leading her. One day, doing service, as they were singing, God took her voice. 
the Bible said that it's all sorted with yes. Let's learn a lesson from the 70 elders. God does not want us to stop where we are. If not, we will not be running with this thing. Because last year, he gave us supernatural miracles. And this year, he wants to multiply the miracles. Not just physically, but divinely. So let's take our time. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are today. Where you are now, where I am now, is the least place God expects me to be. There's a greater glory. There's a greater honor. We can only assess it when we tarry with God. Men who pay the price will get divine multiplication this year. Men who pay the price. This morning, I don't know what I said to you, but for me, this year, I want to carry the power of God. I want to run with the presence of God. Because one thing I've come to understand with my work with God, when you have these things, other things will fall, will come to you with ease. Men will stop you just to bless you. They will fall on each other just to honor you because you are carrying the presence of God. So let's make up our mind that this year, we want to take time to tarry before God. We want to stay with God. We want to know the mind of God. So that God will do more than that which he has said to us through the team, divine multiplication. We're not just going to build houses. We're not just going to ride cars. We're not just going to get the best jobs in time. But we are going to run with the presence of God. That when we get to our streets, when we get to our community, just like William Seymour, the houses around us, they begin to experience the touch of God. They begin to experience multiple dimensions of the healing and diverse, you know, aspects of God. They will begin to see God in new form. That person that you've been misunderstood for years will come to you and say, see, I want to accept Jesus. I have seen something else. Why? Because you are carrying the presence of God. God is calling you today so that he can fill you again. Your cup is not full here. Even if it is full, it is not overflowing yet. And that is the level God wants to bring you and I this morning. I don't know how many of us want to assess God's presence in a new dimension this morning. You're saying to yourself, I am not satisfied with where I am. Even though I pray for 10 minutes, I want to pray for 20 minutes. If I stay in the presence of God for one hour, I want to assess for two hours. I want to know God more than just the healer. I want to see the God who parted the Red Sea. I want to have different dimension of this God they are talking about. Remember that song, you are more than what people say. We've not seen all of God yet. But as we assess him, as we stay with him, as we carry his presence, divine multiplication will not be far away from us. I want us to rise up this morning. And I want you to speak to God yourself. Remember, Exodus 34 2, God was the one who called Moses. He said, come up in that. He's calling you today. He's asking you to come and assess more for, from him to have more of the divine multiplication. There's no need to have all the financial breakthrough and still not have sound health. And still you cannot assess God. His presence is more than gold. That is what we are talking about this morning. I want more of you. I want more of you. Jesus, the more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus, more love you. I want more of you. Father, this is our prayer. 
this money. I want more of you, Jesus. The more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus. More of you. We've had enough of you. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you remove them from us. Touch us again once more, Lord Jesus. More of you. Feel our cup to overflow this morning. Feel our cup to overflow this morning. 
Fill our cup to overflow this morning in the name of Jesus. Fill our cup to overflow this morning. Fill our cup to overflow this morning. Lord, we are asking for your touch this morning. Oh God, more of you we pray. A new dimension of you we ask. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. 